Okay, so audio was scrapped for the first five minutes. We got a recap of the last few games. We got to know that Desmond is the chosen one. Templars are evil. Something is coming. We have about a month and a half. And uh, the apple that Desmond got in the last game uh, now leads them towards something underground in a cave. Yeah, solo flower. And now Desmond needs to find a key. Alright, what do you need me to do? We'll start simple. Walk to the marker over there. The tutorial, yay! Okay, Desmond. Let's practice climbing on these objects. And jumping. Free run your way through this little obstacle course. <laughs> That's a constraint. These are optional objectives that raise your synchronization rate. All right, Desmond, follow the on-screen instructions and kill the two Templars. Hang? No. <laughs> All you have to do here is jump the gap. Jump the gap, huh? Ah, huh. uh, too much. Where the hell do you think you're going? Hold only the right mouse button to free run. Synchronization levels look good now. We should be able to build the world. Time to find out what the temple wants from you. What was that about progress? Synchronized 100%. I'm just gonna walk into the colonial period. Everything all right, sir? Yes, fine. I'm just preoccupied, that's all. Don't forget your invitation. Master Birch will be meeting you inside. Thank you. Where shall I retrieve you once you're done? In front of the Opera House. And be quick about it. Don't expect to be here long. I'll bring her round at once. Thank you. What's your name? A deadly performance. Let's start. Invitation, please. Shall I take your coat, sir? <laughs> New email received. How do I open it?
Right here, this referred uh, to as Covent Garden, which it faces, or the Royal Opera House, which it later became. However, this is the original theater royal building, opened in 1732, destroyed by fire in 1808. It will be rebuilt, then destroyed by fire again in 1857, and then almost completely renovated in the 1990s. They've installed a smoke detector this time. The original theater lineup was varied, containing ballet, operas, even acrobatics. Many of Handel's operas opened here, right up until his death in 1759 when he mysteriously stopped writing them. But the building was mainly used for presenting plays, at least for the first hundred years of its history. The reason? It held the exclusive rights to perform spoken drama in London, awarded by King Charles II. Yes, kings could do that, though why they would is beyond me. Ezio di Torre Born 1459, Ezio di Torre da Firenze was a master assassin during the Italian Renaissance, as well as being an inheritor of the mysterious ability of eagle vision. One of your ancestors, Ezio was something of a playboy in his teenage years, but his life changed in 1476 when his father and brothers were arrested and executed for treason. Ezio tried to save them, but the evidence clearing their names mysteriously disappeared in the hands of the family friend. Instead, they were hanged as Ezio looked on. Ezio fled with his mother and sister to Montergioni, where he sought refuge with his uncle Mario di Torre. While Ezio had originally intended to continue on and settle in Spain, Mario had other ideas. He was the leader of the Italian Assassin Brotherhood and spent the next several years training Ezio and convincing him to help fight the Templars responsible for the death of his father and brothers. Ezio spent the next decade assassinating his way through the Templar ranks, eventually cornering the Templar Grand Master, Rodrigo Borgia, in Venice in 1487. Borgia got away, but Ezio was able to recover an apple of Eden and was formally inducted into the Assassin Order. After several setbacks for the next few years, Ezio traveled to Rome in 1499 to confront Rodrigo, who by then had become Pope Alexander VI. After defeating Rodrigo but sparing his life, Ezio opened a hidden vault under the Sistine Chapel, where he discovered a message left by the First Civilization warning of a catastrophe that would threaten to wipe out humanity. Yes, that would be the one we're facing right now. Over the next 20 or so years, Ezio worked at strengthening the Italian Assassin Brotherhood and fighting the Templars, which is sort of what we do. One of the, his greatest accomplishments would be discovering a hidden library belonging to Altair, hidden under former Assassin's stronghold at Masyaf and containing another message from the First Civilization. He retired from the Brotherhood shortly thereafter, which is what we call ending on a high note. He was terrific at jumping, too. Ezio died in Florence in 1524. This is going to be complicated. I do last checkpoint, restart memory, exit memory, quit. Ladies and gentlemen, you are requested to kindly find your seat. Well, we always knew he had the talent. Wonderfully found a gumption to go through with it. We do wish him well. Good evening, sir. This way, please. Excuse me. Pardon me. Uh, my apologies. Excuse me. Evening, Haytham. Reginald? I can't tell you how happy I was to hear they'd mounted this revival. Gay's best work by far. Have you seen it before? Once. My father brought me here as a child. Though I remember little of it. I don't suppose tonight will afford me the luxury of a proper viewing either. No. No, I'm afraid it won't. On to business then. Do you see him? What do we have there? He's seated in one of the boxes above. The stairs are watched. You'll need to find another way up. <laughs> I already have. What can I do it invisibly? 
So, Black Mole at set word of trial comes on in the afternoon, and she hopes you will order matters so as to... Excuse me. A thousand pardons. Pardon me. So sorry. Thank you. Apologies. Don't get up. I'll be fine. Thank you. I'll just be over here. Oh, let's start climbing. Climb up to the balcony. Um, what are you doing with that camera? Isn't this like very, very visible? No, there's a candlestick there. Uh, okay, you do you. Well, you gotta give it to assassins, they're in fuckingly good shape. Ooh, lockpicking. Move the mouse left and right to lock it and hold the tension angle. Carefully move the mouse up and down to lock it and hold the raking angle. Quickly press the mouse button to break the lock. Okay. I have no idea what I just did. <laughs> I've got a bit of stage fright. A little Dutch courage up with a blue moon cheek. We rose your pride and threatened every door to bribe her. The blood like law are won by time. And surety must be seen to our You're ruining everything. And jump. Okay. Easy enough, I guess. Yeah, sit behind him. Hey, Ethel. You should have come to me. We would have found another way. Yes, but then you would have known. For what it's worth, I'm sorry. As am I. Bye bye. Shink. Yeah, why don't you check before you murderize them? And screams. Sensible 
Heaven we must leave that that What are those men doing in there? Order! We must have order! Yeah, arrest everyone but the uh, most suspicious guy. I'll search it on here. You search down there. Very well. If you find anyone, give a shout. Thank you. You let your hat in now. And how was the opera? Rather dull, truth be told. Shall we be off then? Aye. To Fleet and Bride. By your command. Oh, boss. Fascinating. Gentlemen. I hold in my hand a key, and if this book is to be believed, it will open the doors of a storehouse built by those who came before. Ah, yes. Those who ruled, reigned, and vanished from the world. Do we know what it is that will be held within? It could contain certain knowledge, perhaps a weapon, or something as yet unknown, unfathomable in its construction and purpose. It could be any of these things, or none of them. They are still an enigma, these precursors. But of one thing I am certain. Whatever waits behind those doors shall prove a great boon to us all. Or our enemies, should they find it first. They won't. You've seen to that. I assume you know where this storehouse is? Ah, Mr. Harrison. Gentlemen. How fair your calculations? I believe the site lies somewhere within this region. That's a lot of ground to cover. My apologies. <laughs> Were that I could be more accurate. That's all right. It suffices for a start. And that is why we've called you here, Master Kenway. We'd like for you to travel to America, locate the storehouse, and take possession of its contents. I'm yours to command. Although a job of this magnitude will require more than just myself. Of course. Upon this paper are the names of five men sympathetic to our cause. Each is also uniquely suited to aid you in your endeavor. With them at your side, you will want for nothing. Well, then I'd best be on my way. I knew our faith in you was not misplaced. We booked you passage to Boston. Your ship leaves at dawn. Go forth, Haytham, and bring honor to us all. How long did it take to cross the Atlantic at that time? Some fresh air might do me good. If I'm not mistaken, Ethan Kenway is not the main character. The Providence was one of many sailing ships in the British Merchant Navy. It basically means it was a trade ship, rather than one meant for war. You notice it's carrying cannon, but those are mainly for protection against pirates or privateer vessels, or for turning the ship into a privateer vessel should the need arise. The ship was built in 1748, made several trips a year between Britain and North American colonies, with occasional visits to the West Indies. The manifest doesn't indicate anything particularly interesting, mostly it carried staples like tea, molasses, cloth, 
It's captained by its part owner, one Samuel Smythe, who got something of a reputation among sailors for both cruelty to his crew and penny pinching on rations. Incidentally, there's not exactly a way to keep good sailors on board. The crew is probably both inexperienced and disgruntled. Ideally, you want an experienced crew who are hugely gruntled. <laughs> hugely gruntled, although you likely don't know much about running an 18th century sailing vessel, odds are you won't notice a difference. Altair ibn Lahad. Born in 1165, Altair was born into the Assassin Brotherhood in the stronghold of Masyaf. His early life wasn't a happy one. His mother died during childbirth, then, when he was a young boy, his father was killed during the first siege of Masyaf. Only shortly thereafter, the Assassin he died to save committed suicide in front of the 11 year old Altair. With his parents gone, Altair looked to Al Mualem, the then mentor of the Order, as a father figure. Al Mualem recognized Altair's potential and took on his training personally. Altair reached the rank of Master Assassin by the age of 25, an unheard of accomplishment. If there was an Assassin book of records, there'd probably be a picture of his, this, this fellow on the front. Altair was one of the best fighters in Assassin history, with an arrogance to match. After a disastrous mission in 1191, which he broke the creed and very nearly let an apple of Eden fall into the Templar hands, Altair was sent back down to novice rank and forced to begin again. As part of his rehabilitation, he was responsible for taking out the major players in the Templar Order at the time, including the Grand Master Robert Sable. Tragically, in the end, he was also forced to kill Al Mualem, who turned out to be both a Templar and corrupted by the influence of the Apple. After his mentor's death, Altair took control of the Order, turning it into a secret and world spanning organization it is today. One of the things that made Altair such a deadly assassin was something we now call Eagle Vision kind of sixth sense inherited from his first civilization. It allowed him to read his enemies and surroundings in a way that goes beyond what the human eye can see. Of course, you'll know more about that than me. I can't believe I just typed that, because it's in your blood, and that's part of why you're here. Well, let's be honest, you knew you weren't here because of my unenduring affection or my warm and passionable, passionate cuddles. And we got graphical glitches! Well, that's a very nice ship. Can I have the map for this one? I want to use it in my games. Is that the kitchen? Or oh, something. There's a man sitting on another man's face. <laughs> Is there another level down? Sergeant? Good morning, Doctor. To you as well. A question, if I may. Do you serve aboard the ship, or are you simply taking passage? A bit of both, actually. I've been commissioned by the Royal Navy to study maritime illness. I'll be observing the crew during the journey. We have found that uh, sailors fare far better on the open seas than the rest of us. I hope to discover why that is. Well, I hope you are successful in your endeavors. As do I. Thank you for the kind words. Okay, that's the ship's surgeon. Okay, those glitches are a bit too much. How do I fix that? Lower the anti aliasing a bit, I think. Shouldn't there be another level down? Okay, let's see. 
Something is very wrong with this lamp. Um. Oh, this is very bad. Maybe lower the environment quality just a bit. The shadow quality. Cool. Of course, crossing the Atlantic today is easy as a plane ride, but it was much more difficult in colonial times, even though I imagine tiny food and cramped conditions and likelihood of sitting next to a fat man for many hours were pretty much the same. For European travelers, it was at best a six week, six week journey, voyage, but depending on delays, it could last months. Dangers included storms and their opposite being becalmed, seasickness, food running short, and dying of boredom because you had nothing to do all day. For Africans captured into slavery, the Atlantic voyage was much worse across the Middle Passage, usually to the Caribbean. The journey was just as long, but slaves were kept below decks and rarely allowed out in the fresh air, with the men usually in shackles. They were given only one meal a day, less if provisions ran low. Disease was rampant and mortality rates were high. They will never complain about being inappropriately touched by airport security again. Though to be fair, we're now firm friends and Juan was very gentle. Let's try not to clip through the freaking hall. Shall we? Walk slowly. Captain? Captain! Mr. Kenway! I just wanted to thank you again for taking me aboard. And apologize for any inconvenience it may have caused. Inconvenience would be an understatement. I'm sorry, I don't follow. My ship was held in port for two days that we might accommodate you. I lost several contracts as a result. I had no idea. Of course not. You nobles are all the same. Uh -huh. And then all will be well. Are you sure about that? Of course. Have I ever led you astray? Nah. No, you don't sit right with the others. Have faith, my friend. You'll see. Well, well. Seems our esteemed guest has deigned to grace us with his presence. You might want to head back to your quarters. Top deck's no place for tender Parnells. So I thought. And yet here you are. Oh -ho. Fancy yourself a joker, eh? Let's see how funny you find this. That's enough, Graves. Stay out of this. Sees to hell us. with the captain! And to hell with you, Mills! Who side you on anyway? <laughs> nice move. Well, Anyone else? Go again if you are. This is unwise. Why is that? You think I'm afraid of you? No. But you should, should be. be. <laughs> Never. <laughs> okay. You like these odds. Doesn't matter. What's the meaning of this, Captain? Explain yourself at once, Mister Kenway. These fought. We were simply passing the time with a bit of sport, Captain. How about you pass the time by doing your goddamn jobs instead? 
I wasn't aware I was paying you to loll about. A word, please, Mr. Kenway. Certainly, Captain. Oh, I nearly forgot. There's oh, your knife back. <laughs> They started it. I don't care for you, Mr. Kenway. I've had nothing but trouble since you came aboard. Your problems have nothing to do with me. I beg your pardon? You're a poor leader, ill-tempered and cruel, and it's clear your crew has no respect for you. Hmm. <laughs> and I clipped through the hall again. Excellent. Look, I don't want to argue. In fact, I need a favor. Oh, this is rich. I suspect some of the men intend to mutiny. I'm sure of it. Really? What a surprise. As I cannot trust any of them, I am compelled to turn to you. And why should I help you? Because if they do intend to betray, I'm the only hope you have of reaching America alive. Well, what will it be? If what you say is true, what other choice do I have? Thank you. But let me be clear. Should you ever dare to insult or threaten me again, I'll not hesitate but to cut off your head myself. Are we understood? Excellent. Good day. Let's not clip through the hall, even though the lamp really wants to. My cabin. Is it my cabin? It is my cabin. Nice cabin overall. Day 28. Six weeks, that's 42 days. Mr. Kenway. Captain. Whatever they're up to, I believe it's coming to a head. Then I'd best get to work. Limit health loss, investigate the crew. He's got our rations again. Claims we're not provisioned for such luxuries. It's not right that you should feast on lamb and wine. We're stuck with tinned fish and biscuits. These are some Helen. Have you chance to You looking for another fight? That it? Go away. Hmm. Yeah, didn't think there'll be much of it. You there! I have some questions for you. That's nice, but I ain't got time to gossip. Probably wouldn't have anything useful to share anyway. You want information? Try the cook, or the doctor. Everyone's always chatting them up. Let's start with the doctor then. Excuse me, Sergeant. A doctor, if you have a moment. Have you taken him? Oh, nothing like that. I was wondering if you'd heard any rumblings of trouble aboard. What sort of trouble? Unusual complaints or grievances. 
Men taking issue with the captain. You the sound passengers. just like James. Like I told him, I've been much too busy with my research to notice anything not work related. And where might I find James? The galley's your best bet. Now, if you'll excuse me. Who is this James fella? You play dice. Fanorona is believed to have originated in Madagascar. It is played on a 9 row by 5 column board of intersecting lines. Each player places 22 black or white pieces on the board, then tries to capture the opponent's pieces by moving his own along the lines and either approaching an opposing stone or withdrawing for one. Capture all the opponent's pieces. Catch the opponent's pieces by moving towards them or away from them. When the piece is taken, all consecutive opponent's pieces standing behind that piece will also be captured. Capturing moves are mandatory. If no capturing move is possible, the player can move one piece to a neighboring empty slot. If a capturing move is possible after taking opponent pieces, the player can keep chaining moves until no further capture is possible. It is forbidden for a piece to move to the same slot two times in one turn. Okay. Shh, no. Start the game. Interesting setup. Use the piece selected to move pieces along the lines on the board. Approaching or withdrawing from the opposing piece will remove it. Better. Okay. I have black pieces. Hey, I'm I'm thinking. Oh yeah. Um Oh, I have to do this move? Okay. No, I don't have to do this move. I can do... What? Uh-huh. out of my board Take this one. Here. And then... Here. And then here. Got me there. And... Wait, there's another move. Why did you do that? I can take four of yours now. Actually five. That was five. And you gave that to me. Nice take. Nice take. Yeah, I thought you'd do that. Ouch. Take his hat off. Keeps his face in too. 
so we can't see him watch it. If this moves, that's one, that's two. Oh, one and two. Yeah, do one. And two. And over here, then he has to move down. Okay. Take this one, move it here. I'll give you that. That's five to four. I'm thinking this one over here and then no he can take it turn over here that can take it this will take it so don't do that move if i move this one over here he takes it if i move this one over here he takes it if i move this one over here he takes it over here he takes it if I take this one over there, nothing happens. Now I can't take that one over there because it will take it. If I take it over there, then I might have a shot at something. Yeah, that's also not a good move for me. But if I move this one here, he can take it. Uh, so take this one over here. Stop it with your hand, I'm focusing. Obviously, should have at least moved it to something that I can use. Here, it's not threatened. Okay, it's four to four. Yeah, I have to do this move. If I move here, he takes it. If I move here, he takes it. If I take this one over here, he takes it. If I move this one over here, he can take it. Take this one, move it over here. Yeah, this one has to move here. the two. Now this one can move here. And this one moves here, takes the one above. This one can take him, do that. Anything this does, it will be taken. If I move this anywhere, it will be taken. If I move this over here, it's taken. So, over here. I'm thinking too conservatively. I need this one over here. He's a 
Now, if I move this over here, he has to move away. Make like you're working. Ah, damn it. God is now. Okay, okay. My fault. Didn't think about the double move. Okay. Let's try and corner him. Oh, I can take him. Thank you. You lost. Nice game. What else you got? Checkers. Nine men's Morris. Sometimes referred to as a cowboy, a cowboy checkers. Nine men's Morris is a board game that dates back at least to the Roman Empire. It is played on a board with nine stones for each player. The player's alternative plays stones. Three stones in a row gives the player the right to remove an opposing stone. Leave the opponent with less than three pieces or block all his possible moves. Form mills to capture enemy pieces. A mill is formed when three of your pieces are placed in a straight line. Forming a mill allows the player to take an enemy piece of their choice that is not already part of a mill. Players place their pieces one after the other in any empty, on, empty space on the board. Players take turns moving their pieces to a neighboring empty slot. When a player is left with only three pieces, he can move them at any to, to any empty slot on the board. I think I got it. You play first. Use the piece letter to select pieces on empty slots. Yeah, he's gonna block me. So... Put one here, blocks him, gives me two. He blocks me. And I put one here. He puts one on the other side. I put one here, he blocks me. So I put one here, and he blocks me, and so I have to block him. And that's an interesting move. I'm thinking... I need some pieces on the other levels. Here. Yeah, now I have to block this. Here's a piece I have to move a piece to an adjacent empty slot. And all my moves are blocked because I stayed inside. Yeah, all these pieces can't move. Okay. Um. Yeah, 
suggestions? Anyone? Uh, yeah, that's what I thought. Not helping. I can move this one over here. Obviously. I'm not sure what I'm doing, by the way. Oh shit! Oh shit. I can't block that. Okay, let's give him room, maybe he'll hang himself. No, he's gonna make a threesome. And there goes one of my pieces. Got no other moves. It won't take long to win. Yeah, yeah, I'm not gonna win this one. What bet? I didn't bet anything. Okay, but I, I learned some things. Cool. Deckhand originally from where we British somewhat optimistically call Sunny Brighton. He got his love of the sea from his father, who was also a sailor. He first took young Louis to sea with him at the age of 10, sailing from London to Boston on a vessel named the Windward. Hmm. Why is that making noise? Uh, as he grew older, Mills kept working as a merchant marine, traveling the world and gaining a reputation as a reliable and level-headed sailor. He joined the crew of the Providence in 1752, staying with the captain and crew through a variety of hardships, though by 1755 he was thinking of moving on. 